I was one of the Native American children adopted at birth and removed from our country's Indian reservation system. I was raised in a small middle-class farming community but was never told of my true American Indian heritage. It was still taboo back in those early days. The years passed and in 1987 I lost both parents. While going through their personal belongings, my wife discovered my adoption papers and she began a search. Five years later, I was reunited with my biological Lakota family living on the Lower Brule Sioux Indian Reservation of South Dakota. I am a son of two mothers and a product of two worlds that had collided, but I have an equal amount of love and pride for both. I'm Paul LaRush, and the stories you are about to see are an attempt to share this true American story of a hidden heritage. Welcome to Hidden Heritage. I'm your host, Paul LaRush. Today I would like to talk about an upcoming day of observance, Native American Day, which falls on Monday, October 14th this year. It's a day that carries deep meaning for many indigenous communities across the United States. For me, as the product of both worlds, it has become a day to reflect on the growing pains of America. But it also initiates a wide range of conversations, from celebration to reflection. In this episode, I would like to explore both the pros and cons of this day, and examine how both Native and non-Native people view this important observance. Following is the opening speech given by Gerard Baker, former National Park Superintendent of Mount Rushmore, upon the opening of the historical Brulee's Concert for Reconciliation of the Cultures that was held on July 14th and 15th in the year 2007. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Mount Rushmore. My name is Gerard Baker, and I want to tell you right now, do let go. Welcome. I am the superintendent here at this beautiful place in these beautiful and sacred black hills of South Dakota. And again, I'd like to welcome everybody here. But you know, before the night is over, we're not only going to be neighbors, we're going to be relatives and friends. And so with that in mind, I would like to have you greet your neighbors right now and also push together a little bit. We have a lot more people coming in. <laughs> greet your neighbors first of all. Say, how are you doing tonight? Push in a little bit, if you will. Let people who are sitting up there or standing up there sit down. Thank you. Mount Rushmore, in these beautiful and sacred black hills, has many meanings to many peoples. I think for me, first and foremost, right now, because of what we're experiencing in our fight against terrorism, having our men and our women fighting for us, this represents our freedoms. And at this time, I would like to invite all of the veterans, retired and active, to please stand so we can honor you for what you have done for our country. We also honor tonight those families that support the ones who go over. The mothers, the fathers, the grandmothers, the children, the wives, and the husbands. We also support and honor you as well tonight. And we thank you for that. The setting here can't be any better. It's a beautiful day, a beautiful evening. And we start looking at these four presidents and amongst the sacred black hills, we think of many things. We think of all the times that in our past histories of our peoples, we've had some pretty negative times. Negative times of removal, for example, moving people from these beautiful areas to reservations. A time period when, as we mentioned last night, back in those days, we couldn't do this as Indian people. We couldn't sing, we couldn't dance, we couldn't even pray sometimes and have ceremony because it was illegal. 
how far we've come. What I encourage people to do to get together is to never, never forget about the past. But also, we will still continue to have tremendous hope for the future so that we will never again have to do that. So that our children can play side by side, no matter what color they are, no matter what language they speak, and no matter what background they come from. That we can get away from the terms and the activities related to racism and prejudice. Just by living here in this free country, to me, we are on our way. But again, the reality is that we have a ways to go. It is places like this, and it is events like this, that can truly bring us close together as human beings. Because again, we are one people. We are equal. We are equal to walk on this earth. We are equal to be free, as we see it in America. So with those thoughts in mind, I encourage you to keep teaching your children about who you are. I don't care what color we are, ladies and gentlemen, we should never forget our cultures. I don't care if we're American Indian, American German, American Norwegian, African American, Hispanic, and so forth. Number one, we are human being. Number two, we are American. And above all that, we are free. So ladies and gentlemen, to bring us closer together tonight and to share this reconciliation of cultures, I am extremely proud to introduce to you Brule and the American Indian Rock Opera. To start with, I'd like to talk about how Native American Day came to be. Some states in the U.S. began officially recognizing Native American Day as an alternative to Columbus Day. My tribal home state of South Dakota was the first state to do so in 1990, thanks to the efforts of former Governor George Mickelson. This was during a time when there was a growing awareness about the need to honor the contributions history, and culture of indigenous peoples, something that had long been overlooked in mainstream celebrations. The shift away from Columbus Day has become symbolic. For many Native Americans, Columbus Day represents the beginning of colonization, the reality of being a conquered nation, land theft, and centuries of oppression and cultural trauma. So Native American Day is viewed as a reclamation of history, a chance to honor the past, celebrate indigenous culture, and educate others about the struggles Native peoples face over the years and continue to face to this day. There are several clear benefits to recognizing Native American Day. First, it promotes a more accurate understanding of American history. For so long, the stories of American Indians were excluded from the mainstream narrative. I was one of the adopted Native American children and I grew up off the reservation. I attended high school during the years from 1971 to 1973. My classroom, American History Studies, of my own tribe, the Lakota, only some 60 miles away from where I grew up, was extremely suppressed. By celebrating Native American Day, it's an opportunity to confront the realities of colonization while also celebrating the rich and diverse cultures of Native peoples. Second, it serves as a platform for visibility and advocacy. Native American communities are often underserved, and Native American Day brings focus to important issues 
such as land rights, treaties, health care, human trafficking, missing women and children, and education. It's a chance to address the ongoing challenges that Indigenous people face today. Finally, Native American Day encourages cross-cultural understanding. For non-Native people, this day can be a time to learn, reflect, and engage with Native cultures in a meaningful way through events, educational activities, and direct conversations. This kind of interaction can help break down stereotypes and foster a greater respect for the rich diversity within Native communities. However, Native American Day is not without its criticisms or complications. One major concern raised by some American Indians is that dedicating just one day can feel symbolic or even hypocritical. The deep issues affecting indigenous communities, such as poverty, health disparities, and the fight for sovereignty, require attention every day not just during one annual event. Another criticism is that not all states recognize Native American Day. While states like South Dakota and California have adopted it, many other states still observe Columbus Day. This uneven recognition sends mixed signals about whose history is being honored. As a product of both worlds, and with admiration and love for both, you can imagine the internal conflict this can create spiritually within an individual. This internal conflict, for me, was manifest almost instantly. Upon the overnight discovery of my true Lakota heritage, I felt the call to work on reconciliation, of which I still stand on today, and in fact, it has become my personal mission. From a non-Native perspective, there's sometimes resistance or indifference toward Native American Day. Some may feel that changing Columbus Day undermines tradition, while others simply don't know enough about Native history to engage with the holiday. This lack of awareness can create friction between those who want to celebrate Columbus Day and those who advocate for Native American Day. So. How do Native and non-Native people view Native American Day? For many Native Americans, it's an empowering day, a chance to reflect on their heritage, honor their ancestors, and celebrate the survival and resilience of their cultures. Many communities organize powwows, storytelling events, or educational workshops. It's a day to come together and celebrate identity. But there's also a recognition that more work needs to be done. Activists and community leaders often use Native American Day to call for systemic changes, like better protection of sacred lands, the honoring of treaty rights, and policies that improve health care and education for indigenous peoples. On the non-Native side, responses vary widely. In some areas, Non-Native people actively participate in Native American Day events, seeing it as an opportunity to learn and show solidarity. But there are others who either don't engage or may feel conflicted, especially in states where Columbus Day is still observed. For them, the shift towards Native American Day can seem like a challenge to establishing traditions 
that may not fully understand why the change is important. In the year 2007, our American Indian music and dance group, Brule, set forth to present a concert for reconciliation of the cultures. The site we picked was the magnificent Mount Rushmore National Park Amphitheater. After three years of planning and with the support of former Mount Rushmore National Park Supervisor, Gerard Baker, the concert became a reality and against all odds, over 10,000 people attended. But one lingering question still is, why can't this Concert for Reconciliation be presented on an annual basis? Well, the politics of America dictate that the country as a whole is still not ready to fully embrace the reconciliation movement. Though some countries like Australia, South Africa, and Canada have successfully embraced the reconciliation movement, America is still not there. Our country is currently in an era of acceptance for minority and immigrant populations, and the emphasis has shifted away from the indigenous people, once again taking the back seat to the dominant society. One example of this from my perspective as a Native American musical artist, is that we are still not recognized as being part of the mainstream entertainment industry. That is why I say we are pioneering one of the last musical frontiers, the emergence of contemporary Native American music into the mainstream. To this day, there is still no category in the Grammys for contemporary American Indian music. As Native American Day continues to gain recognition, we have to ask ourselves, what does the future hold? Will more states adopt this day? Will it eventually replace Columbus Day nationwide? Or can both days exist side by side? There's a growing movement to ensure that indigenous history and contributions are included in education year-round, not just on a designated holiday. Native American Day could serve as a stepping stone towards greater representation and equity. But it's up to all of us, Native and non-Native alike, to carry this work forward. I encourage you to use Native American Day as a time to reflect on the history of the land you live on, to learn more about the indigenous people who call this country home, and to take part in conversations that move us towards greater understanding and reconciliation. Well, that's all for this episode. I hope this discussion about Native American Day gives you some food for thought, whether you're Native or non-Native. As always, let's continue to honor the stories and experiences of Indigenous people, not just on this day, but throughout the year. Thank you for joining me, and I look forward to exploring more stories with you next time on Hidden Heritage.
don't care what color we are, ladies and gentlemen, we should never forget our cultures. I don't care if we're American Indian, American German, American Norwegian, African American, Hispanic, and so forth. Number one, we are human beings. Number two, we are American. And above all that, we are free.